Our Sun sits in the centre of the solar system, about 150 million kilometres from Earth. A giant ball of plasma, 100 times wider than our planet, and containing 99.86% of all the mass in the solar system. One million planet Earths could fit inside our closest star. Deep within the Sun's centre is its core. This is the hottest part of the Sun. Here, temperatures reach 15 million degrees Celsius. The core is also the densest part of the Sun. It only takes up about 10% of the Sun's volume, but contains 40% of its mass. Around the Sun's core sits the radiative zone. This part of the Sun carries the energy released from nuclear fusion reactions out from the core. Heat transfer in this zone is slow. It can take heat up to 100,000 years to escape through the radiative zone. Above that is the convection zone. Heat is transferred much more quickly in this part of the Sun. It moves around like soup bubbling in a pot. Any matter that reaches the surface cools and sinks back down to the hotter radiative zone. You are looking at the Sun's photosphere. This is the surface of the Sun that emits light that we can see. The photosphere is between 5,000 and 6,000 degrees Celsius. But the photosphere is not the uppermost layer of the Sun. Above it, there is a thick, invisible layer called the chromosphere. This part of the Sun is even hotter than the photosphere beneath it. Beyond the chromosphere is the Sun's corona. This extends out from the photosphere for millions of kilometres. Despite temperatures in the corona reaching 2 million degrees, it is hard to see. The best time to observe the Sun's corona is during a solar eclipse. The Moon blocks the bright light of the Sun, revealing the corona around it. It takes 50 million years for the sun's energy to travel from its core to its surface, and then another eight minutes for the light to reach us here on Earth. Our sun is not static and unchanging. It is active and changes with time. These small cells or granules cover the surface of the sun. Each is about a thousand kilometers wide. They are the result of imprints by convection cells. The top of each cell leaves an impression on the surface above. Each granule lasts about 20 minutes, creating an ever-shifting pattern. These dark patches on the photosphere are sunspots. One sunspot can last for a few days or several months. They do not stay in the same place, but move across the surface of the sun. Sunspots also change in size, expanding and shrinking over time. In April 1947, astronomers observed the largest sunspot in recent history. This was more than 190,000 kilometers wide. 15 planet Earths could fit across its diameter. Like Earth, the Sun has a magnetic field. Unlike Earth, the Sun is not solid, it is plasma. This means that as it rotates, the Sun's equator spins at a faster rate than its north and south poles. This makes the magnetic field lines curve and twist. The strong magnetic field stops convection from taking place. This lack of convection in these areas of the Sun produces sunspots, which are cooler and darker than the rest of the surface. When we look for sunspots, we see that they often appear in pairs. One is a magnetic north pole, and the other is a magnetic south pole. Magnetic field lines come out of the surface of the Sun through one sunspot, and go back in through its pair. Astronomers have known about sunspots for thousands of years, but it was only from the 17th century onwards that scientists could study them in detail. This was thanks to the invention of the telescope. In 1610, Galileo used a telescope to make several observations of sunspots over time. He tracked their movement and discovered that the sun rotates. The number of sunspots astronomers can see in the photosphere tells them how active the sun is. More sunspots mean more activity. Scientists have collected this data for hundreds of years. They have found cycles of peaks and dips in the sun's activity. During a solar minimum, the magnetic field lines are straight. The sun is less active. During a solar maximum, the magnetic field lines have twisted. The sun is more active. At each peak or dip, the sun's magnetic field flips over. The next stage starts and the cycle continues. A peak or solar maximum takes place about every 11 years. This means scientists can predict when the next solar maximum will occur. There are other features on the sun, more dramatic than sunspots. Some are even dangerous. This is a solar prominence. 
a loop of plasma extending out from the photosphere. These occur when part of the twisted magnetic field becomes unstable. Matter bursts out from the surface of the sun. These prominences can be many times larger than the Earth and last for days or months. As the sun's magnetic field lines twist, energy builds up within them. Sometimes the lines cannot twist anymore and snap back. This results in a solar flare, the largest explosive event in our solar system. Light, particles and radiation burst from the sun's surface and escape into space. One solar flare can last minutes or hours. Solar flares that send particles towards Earth can be dangerous. The charged particles in the flares can damage satellites. The radiation can pose a danger to astronauts in the International Space Station. It is important that we observe our Sun and try to predict when solar flares are likely to happen. If we can forecast this space weather, we can prepare for it.